The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman. This is the Tiger Technicians Hour, and uh, we're looking at a Dow that's up 394, which is up even more a little earlier on. It went from yesterday's low of 24,701, 3,000 points above the December low after going 5,000 points to 26,695, April the 23rd comes all the way back to, uh, it pulls back 2,000 points, and now it's had a 500-point, 400 and some, well, a 500-point rally from the low of yesterday. But it sounds like an incredible thing. Hey, wait a minute. Four days ago, it had gapped down. Look at that red, ugly bar right there when it went right through the 200-period exponential moving average. So here are a couple of questions that I've had. Let's just do this uh, one step at a time. There's going to be a lot to do. I've got questions. Let them just line up. I'll get to them. Here we go, step by step. The reason why we went long yesterday morning is the very same reason we went short one day before the uh, recovery high of 26,695, because there were technical indications to me that said that there could be a turn <clears throat> to the downside um, I made this thick black line here, the 14 period exponential moving. I made it nice and thick, made a big uh, black line. <clears throat> Looks like a little snake there. But I made it because we kept, after breaking above the nine period, the green moving average and the black moving average, the 14 period moving average, we started to test. And it said to me, that the next rally could fail and that we will go underneath the 14 period moving average. The MACD would turn down because it wasn't running anything like it had on the rally to the 26,241, 25th of February high. Look at that, how strong the MACD and stochastic were. This was like a rally failure mode. So it said to me that if there was a move to the downside, we would get a sustained move and that I would use those same indexes to say, now we're getting ready for at least a decent a bounce or this would be the case where we're looking at a turn up that was so strong that, in fact, it could, in fact, be a key reversal moment because the Dow wouldn't go much lower than that. Well, I've compromised. We've taken nice profits in the short position, kept a core position, and at the same time gone long a tradable position yesterday morning. Fortunately, we've got this really strong move and it allows us to now set in place some kind of stops so that at worst, we won't make uh, as much as, as at the high today, but at worst, we will at least make money based on our good entry. Look at the stochastic, the way it went right to the, I think it was 11%, maybe I'm wrong, 13%, 13% level. No, no, no. Yep, yep, 13%. And it's trying to flatten out at 14%. It hasn't spiraled up to the 20% uh, level, which would be way more positive yet. Look at the on-balance volume. It went down, but it didn't go to a very oversold condition, but it went to a kind of an oversold condition based on the pattern, trough D in the, in the, uh, the on-balance volume. Now what we're looking at is, this is a good start. The weekly chart says, you know what, you could start, but there's going to be a lot more work that has to be done to get the technicals, the MACD and stochastic in this middle chart, the weekly chart to improve. And the monthly chart, the technicals are pretty weak. The price is, thank goodness, now instead of being below the 14 period moving average, it's above, but it's still below the nine period moving average, the green line there. A lot of work has to be done. And that's what I wanted. I wanted us to have the core position of the short side because I think there's still going to be some further testing regardless of where we go in the shorter term. For a trade for subscribers, I want you to do the long side. I just wanted to explain that because I've had a couple of questions about it. And there's a position that I've mentioned to subscribers 
that if they wanted to take today, that was a position they could take, but they got to be prepared that the Dow still could fall 1,000 to 1,500 points from yesterday's low. So you got to be prepared. Why? Because nothing is really resolved at this particular point, geopolitically, politically, economically. Um, the way gold is going, that's, that's a geopolitical move. Holding very nicely here, the way the TLT, I said I'd look at the TLT during my update, look at the TLT. The, the U.S. iShares 20-year Treasury bond ETF is trading at 131.01, down 1.38. It had a high, a recovery high of 132.58 yesterday. That is a, about a year high. It was back in 2016 where we were at this level. We haven't been here for quite a while. At the same time, when you look at yields, you could go back a long time and say, hey, wait a minute, these yields have been here, but that's been an extraordinarily quick decline in yields. So they have a little bit of room to go to the upside, but it doesn't have to be earth-shaking. Now, this is going to be very, just to my way of looking at it, this is the way I'm looking at the uh, technical aspect of the TLT. I'll just slap on the bonds here for a moment. Bonds making a peak D if there's no new recovery high today, down one, having hit a recovery high. It's the same as the TLT, but I'm using one because some people like to look at the actual contract. Continuous contract going to 155 and 132nd, trading right now at 153 and 19 30 seconds. The MACD is still strong. Stochastics holding beautifully at 92%. On balance volume said that we were, uh, what I said yesterday when we we're looking at the TLT, that my unbalanced volume reading the blue line, yeah, this is Joe Granville's way of looking at volume. I look at volume through the unbalanced volume. Other people look at volume in all different ways. Whatever you do, good luck to you. Just be consistent, and that's all you're asking is for something that you can make a pattern based on the consistency. My my impression here is that the um, that the stochastic is strong enough that it'll take quite a while for bonds to go underneath 128, the 14 period moving average, for that MACD to actually cross negative, it'll take even more than that, it'll take time and price. Stochastic at 95% is excellent. Um, I put here Tina, which I heard just about a month or so ago for the first time. I had heard it before, but it just didn't strike me as important. And then someone said, yeah, Tina, there is no alternative. <clears throat> and that's really what we're gonna be looking at in the stock market, but in the meantime, there has been an alternative, and that's bonds. That's why money came out of the volatility, the weakness of stocks going into the security of bonds. Now, make this real clear. If the stochastic holds in the 90% area and bonds only pull back from 131 in the TLT to 129-ish, even 128, but then hold at that higher level, high-level consolidation, you could chop around here as the market continues to try to form a really strong base for a much bigger move later this year. And when later this year, later this year means it could be uh, we're, we're trading now at 12.14. Later this year is 12.15. We don't know what's going to happen over the world. Well, we've got a pretty good idea that bonds are probably not going to go to 128 in the next two minutes. But I'm saying that looking out, there's a chance that when bonds start to come down again, which I'm sure they will, as yields go higher, as some kind of normalcy uh, returns, the stock market will start to find its legs and move high in a much more concerted way. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman, Tiger Conditions Hour, Dow's up 392. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, 
the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the Taz Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at Taz has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the Taz Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the Taz Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the Taz Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Taz Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien have just announced a special webinar on June 19th for all subscribers to the Taz Profile Scanner. Steve and Tom will break down the trade matrix, market breadth, heat grid, as well as the three-step process you can use with the Taz Profile Scanner to identify market movers and how to capitalize on that move. For all the details and to get started with the Taz Profile Scanner today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. With a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. Go sign up today. TFNN has launched our brand new website, you can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Well, oh, folks, so we're back. I can't remember where I was a moment ago. Uh, let me just do this. Um, I had a question here at, at the SMHs. Uh, we're still short a small a position that's left, uh, having shorted from the 116s. Um, and 12071 was all time high, and it plopped down to 9761. Now it's in leg B in the daily. And the question is, <clears throat> Basil, do you agree with the SMH 120 minute is in leg C? If agree, would you feel confident using a call option for leg D? So thanks. So uh, <clears throat> the reason why I didn't want to change the um, our positions in the uh, SMHs and in fact flip to the long side, which is really uh, that would have been ideal to do, is because I think this is still an area that is volatile to the extent that at any moment, and it could happen overnight, there could just be a knock to the downside. I, I just didn't want that at this particular point. Um, so, and I don't want to get my, my thinking messed up, but which says that <clears throat> there's a really good chance that this is the area that it has been the weakest. It should remain. The weakest, that's not to say you couldn't have a pretty darn good rally. And, and in fact, going from 97.81, uh, 97.61 to today's high of 101.41, hey, that's pretty good. You know, just say uh, in a couple of days. Now, I the, the reason why I love this question is it means that uh, the person asking the question has been very observant in basing on understanding the Chapman Wave methodology. Let me go through this here. I'm going to make this nice and big. This is the 120-minute chart of the SMHs. <clears throat> the SMH made a low on the 29th at 11.30 <clears throat> Eastern Time of 97.61. It had a nice rally and then made a peak A, a gray peak A. Why is it gray? Because it's underneath the, the blue. It always implies that it's going to a, a buy signal to a buy mode. So I'm calling it gray, meaning that it could fail, which it does. And what it does, it makes an arch formation as the MACD is rallying strongly and the stochastic has already gone way over 80%, uh, and then it pulls back sharply. But on the last pullback of the arch, it doesn't go to the right here, to the 97.61 level. It goes to 97.65 at 15.30, that's 3.30 in the afternoon Eastern time on the uh, 1st of uh, June. <clears throat> The very next bar has the same low, 97.65. So 
That means that that peak A is still active, number one. But in the methodology of the Chapman wave, every peak and every trough needs to be counted. That's your only obligation. That's how, it's not difficult, that's just your obligation. So that means that that little peak right there, even though the next bar was way lower, the low that we're taking is this 9761. And that stays all the way until it's broken. And that says <clears throat> that this particular peak A, let's call it gray, I'll just change it to gray. It's a little bit of a nuisance to change it to gray. Is first, it's a second A, it's a little bit lower than the previous one. Going above that, makes leg B, and there it is. It goes to leg B, gray leg B. And then, and this is the part that I'm proud of, that this person really has understood the concept of the whole Chapman methodology. There's a breakout to the upside after holding above 97.61. You go to your leg C, and the high of the bar for 11.30 this morning was 101.41. And the high of this bar right now at uh, going to 130 is the same level. So this is still a leg C. So the question is, <clears throat> is this a good time to be buying maybe an option, just a call option uh, for a quick trade? And my answer is absolutely yes, this would be the time. The stochastic has come back. It's good, running well. I'm a little concerned when I look at the relative, the relative strength of <clears throat> The on balance volume, it's flat. So it's not showing real buying. I would have preferred if this was moving much higher. So this is what I'm going to say. This is not the ideal vehicle because this is the vehicle that at any point the billings could be announced for May <coughs> and this thing could really pull back. Based purely on a technical aspect, saying I don't care what comes up, the MACD is turning up in the daily chart. The stochastic's finally gone from the single digits to 10%, the double digits on balance volume is trying to rally. Look, the relative strength is rallying. <clears throat> I'd say if you took the 100 call, meaning you're going to pay up, and you're probably going to pay over a dollar and a quarter in premium. So let's just say it's trading at two and three quarters, maybe three and three and three and three and three and three point fifteen. You're going to have to have a, it's going to do, it's going to have to do everything perfectly. It's going to have to make a peak C with a very modest peak C. It hasn't done that yet. And this C can continue. If the C, if the, if the market gets its second win, now it's a 401. S&P's up 42 after a little bit of a breather. Look, the two minute chart, look at that beautiful peak E. Look at the five minute chart, peak D. And look at the 10 minute chart, peak E. And that could be it. That could, <laughs> when you get powerful moves like this, they don't want to hang around uh, letting people short. They want people to be trying to get wrong. So um, this might be just a brief timeout. So this is tough for me. What I would say is I would absolutely, I, I could do it now, but I just, I don't want to mess up just in case I, I mess up my program here, going to an extra uh, window um, because it just might do something. So let me just do this. SMHs on the Chapman Wave um, projections. The, the support in 96.86, look at that. It held beautifully. 95.55 in the weekly. This could be, in fact, turn out to be a much uh, a stronger, sh shorter-term bounce. So this is what I'm going to say. Based on the 120-minute chart, 101.72, 101.71, we're trading at 101.08. Okay, I think I have a plan. I'm going to say, don't get carried away. I think you're going to have a lot more opportunities, and I will also, I, in fact, yesterday morning I was going to buy uh, the diamond uh, calls uh, with the position that we got, but I just can't make it too complicated, you know? It takes a lot of time for me to have to type all this stuff up, talking about it in just a few minutes. Typing it up takes a long time. So I'm just going to say I would, it depends on the premium. If you're going for the 100, if there's 102.50, call and it has to be to what are we now so june one two three goes to the 21st that you i'd get the quit the the closest call position if it's a 102.50 then you might get it for 1.35 1 uh, 1.55 i'd say that that's i don't want to get out too much don't don't get carried away here go for the hundred 
and you're going to have to pay at least one and a, and a little bit for the immediate premium, and then you have to pay for the option premium. So if you can get the hundreds for two points, why don't you put it in for two dollars and five cents? Just take a chance that there's going to be some kind of a dip in the in the semis later today, or to make a, a peak C, you want to play the peak the leg D. Don't get, let it come to you. I wouldn't go for it. Okay, I don't know what they're trading. I'm just doing it because I used to do so much in options that I have a, some kind of an idea of pricing. I suspect that the 100 going out a week and a half, maybe there's a premium of one a little bit. So if you can get the 100 for about two ten, two dollars and ten cents for two two oh five, maybe that's the way to go. All right. Yes, there we are. We just did an option trade. I'll be back. Basil Chapman, take this is our guys at 400. We'll be back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. We're back. <clears throat> so, yeah, UTX, my Dow Quartet. UTX is doing very nicely, up 2.27 today. Triple M should be up at least one. Up two, up four. Oh, look at that move. A triple M, 164.30, and lovely. IBM up one, surely. <clears throat> up 3.56. <laughs> Very nice. What am I missing? Oh, uh, Caterpillar. <clears throat> Caterpillar is up 1.28. Now it's up 1.30. Yep, all of them are very nice. So Syntas, my Dow, uh, sorry, my cash index, C-A-S-H. Syntas is for the C, uh, trading up 1.81. It's holding nicely at the higher level. This is 
uh, overalls, uniforms, rentals tells me about the economy. So far, so good. Um, Syntas is, uh, no, cash. Amazon, let's see where Amazon's trading should be up at least 20. Up 28, uh, not very good. Up 28 at 17, 20. I think it needs more time. Home uh, Cash is spy. Spy is up really nicely. Spy is up 157%, um, up 431 at 27.87. Nice touching the, the uh, nine period exponential moving average. Home Depot, let's see what that is. Home Depot is up five. That is nice action. Good. So uh, the question I had is do I think that this is a low? That could be not just a tradable low, but it could be a position low where we don't come back and take out yesterday's lows. And the answer is, it's really difficult to see, but I do see a base being formed that says Dow 25,000 to 24,600 area could be a really a good cushion. Even if we go up, it could be doing some retesting there. Same thing with the SPY, that we could be coming and doing some retesting. But what's really important is I want to see areas like the XLF, which is trading up uh, 0.56 at 26.74. They've got to sustain a move right now. This The whole area that, to me, is very important. Uh, that, that, that's one thing. The other is, if I, I don't know if I did this, look, wheat. Didn't I do this? Yeah, we had a big move down, down 12 from 507, but it had a spectacular move. Leg C, I think it's going to hold the 502 to 498 level, then try for a leg D. Soybeans trading up 4.5 at 8.83. A leg C holding quite nicely. And then corn, ah, corn. Uh, corn is down, no, it's up one and a quarter now at 4.25 and a half. Yeah, it's in that higher level. I think that these are going to squeak. They've had the biggest move. Now they're going to make slightly higher highs. One of the reasons why we got the DBA for subscribers is that it's at 16.66. This is the um, DB Agriculture Fund. Uh, it's not an ETN. ETN it's, a, it's called a fund. And, uh, and it can't be an ETF because they are, it's not a stock. So it's a, it's, it's a fund. And I like this, but I like it more as a trade that's going to tell me later on about inflation and a whole bunch of other things. So even though we have it, I really am treating it more as we've never had this before. So it's kind of an experiment. We're up very nicely, eight or nine um, percent. Not the point. The point is that it is, um, how can I put this? This is a massive single leg A to the upside in the weekly chart. And it hasn't even started an A in the, in the monthly. It's just been hammered. Can this be the turn in the market in the in the agricultural sector? I just don't know. It's not my area of expertise at all. I'm just looking at the chart, and I think it has a, a potential to at least be forming some kind of a base. Just a quick question. I said I didn't do silver. Gold is up now 0.7. This is holding really well, and silver is um, also holding quite nicely above that downtrend, the down channel line. We said it before and then fail, this time I think there's a chance that it's going to hold for two reasons. The dollar just needs a timeout. It's doing very nicely here. It's up 0.06. Um, I just think that the, the dollar's going to be digesting gains. And the dollar is, for me, the I American icon of international currency leadership because it is economic leadership. That's kind of the way I'm looking at it. Boy, I could be completely wrong, but that's at the moment what I'm looking at. And I'm not... I'm not cheering for anything. I'm saying this is what I'm looking at. That's been my thesis for at least a year. We've been long since April of last year. And I don't know if that's going to really work out. I'll only know it's working out when you see the dollar sometime this year. If it does it, <clears throat> it has to be trading very comfortably in the 99s, giving back very little. Here it is at 97.30. It's got a long way to go. I'd actually even say in the hundreds, over 100. So that's a long way to go. Um, Question I had, uh, yeah, IYT. What, we are, spoke about the IYT yesterday. I said, wow, crude oil is pulling back, pulling back, and yet you haven't had anything in the transport. When we looked at the airline index, well, today it's up 4.40 at 180.38. The iShares Dow Jones Transportation Average Index Fund, all time high 200.42. I'm sorry, uh, 209.44 in September. Pulls back to 155. Can't call that a pullback. It's 25%. It's a huge pullback. Uh, decline. 
and then it rallies huge to under the previous high of 209, it goes to 200.42 April the 24th, same day as the Dow, pulls back very sharply and goes from 200 down to 175. Another 25, boy, that's a 25-point uh, pullback. So, yeah, we're looking at a bounce here that's taking out for the first time, it's taking out the uh, pink nine-period experiential moving average in the daily. It's got a long way to go, get to the even the 185s suggest that transports um, are only then at the weekly uh, 14 and 9 period exponential moving averages. Got a long way to go. Okay, I think we've got, oh, VIX index. The VIX index should be down sharply. Yes, it's down in the 17s at minus 143. But even in the 17s, that's very high. And that's saying, yeah, people are still buying some insurance. So I'm looking at the VIX as if to say this is a potential Chapman Wave right shoulder failure pattern. And if the VIX trades under 16 in the next three days by Friday's close, if it has even one dip under 16, that's going to suggest that this rally that we're looking at right now could have a little bit more legs in time and maybe in price. I don't want to get too carried away. Just let's go one step at a time. I was asked about the EUR USD when I was looking at the currencies. Yeah, underneath the, the down channel, 1.132, I'd say. It's resistance right now. It's at 1.124. A, a nice move, but nothing great. The weekly chart, we've seen this before. Nothing to see here, folks, until the, the euro is trading in the 1.142 area. It goes there. The dollar is going to be pulling back to the low 96s or even lower. However, the USD JPY, and this is really interesting for me, has traveled in the same direction as the, as the dollar for a long time, but lately has been diverging. It's been very weak, very weak. In fact, the yen is at 108.18, trying desperately to do something. It's up 0.12 uh, at 108.18. This is not a very good sign. And that says, let me look at the Nikkei, the Japanese um, index. Rallying today, 165 at 20,630. Yeah, this is going to have to have a lot more work. I don't know if there's a direct correlation, but that actually looked very much like the um, yen until today's action. So today is very strong, uh, but nothing like it was two days ago when it dropped from 20,965 to 20,380. I would call that a bit of a pullback. So, yeah, it's got a long way to go. Puzzle Chapman Tiger Traditions Hour. We'll be back. Oh, have I talked about my webinar? A webinar coming up tomorrow night a week called The Tide. I'll be talking about The Tide. I'll do that when we get back. Hi, folks. Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFN and you'll find market insights under trading newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, 
South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Uh, just a question I had about uh, resistance levels and some uh, some, uh, some of the positions. <clears throat> if you're looking at gold, gold continuous contract has a lot of resistance in the five-minute chart in the 1328 to 1328 area, and you can see it's just done an A B C D E F peak F right here in the, in the two-minute chart. So it's pulling back a little bit. It's done very nicely. Okay, and the question uh, also is um, in terms of the uh, e-mini, there, were there signs that there was resistance? Well, I did the notation, and then I looked at the uh, resistance levels. Right now, there's a little resistance at 2787. It's trading at 2787. Uh, but more importantly, it was the support at 2786 that, was, that came in, kicked in very nicely to 2882. But you can see there are a lot of resistance levels that have capped it at this particular point and kept it in a, in a trading range. So just that I answer those questions. Now, let me just do this here. Within the context of where we are in the New York Stock Exchange, NYA.X, New York Stock Exchange also made a peak D in the Chapman Wave and the daily chart twice. And then the top one was the very last one that was made. I think it was on the 20, right there, on the, on the 1st of uh, May. At 13,669, no, 069, 13,069, and then it plunges down, no, it plunges, it comes down very sharply in this arch formation, takes out the left side low, and it goes and closes at 12,238 uh, 12, is the low, it closes yesterday at 12,764, now it's trading at 12,000. It couldn't be 12,007, it was a two, 12,238, and now it's up at 12,492, testing the 14 period moving average. And you can see this weekly chart. The MACD is a little bit flat. It hasn't kept going down. It's negative, but flat. And the stochastic hasn't gone down as much as the others. This to me is going to be a big clue because if the New York big broad 2000 more stock, New York Stock Exchange can move, it's up 158 to 1.28%. If it, a week from today, today is Tuesday, let's look at it again. In, in, in a week's time, if this key index, we don't talk about it all that much, but it's really important, is able, instead of coming back to test the 12,300 level, 12,200 level, is actually trading and touches once the 12,700, I would say that's really improved the weekly chart, and that's going to be so important. And it could make yesterday's low, or the day before in this case, really important in terms of talking about it more intermediate term than short term. So I talk about that. The other thing is the uh, <clears throat> IYR <coughs> is down 84 cents at 86.37. P 
peak C in the weekly. It's done fabulously. It's been the go-to area while the market's been digesting gains. But if you look at the, um, uh, what was the one? Oh, IBB, which I actually haven't updated for a little while because it just kept making lower lows and lower highs. That IBB, the NASDAQ biotech sector, 122.97 was the high in December. It drops down to the 89 area, rallies up to 116, and now it's trading at 102. This is going to be important for me because I want to see in this particular move, are we rotating through other sectors or is it the XLK that is back in focus? Well, the XLK, the S&P Select Tech Spider Fund, was the leader on the upside. It was on the leader when it went from the uh, 76 area down to the 57, a 10-point decline into December's low from the um, September high to the December low. Then it rallies to a new recovery high of 79.70 in May, and now it's pulled back to the 200-period moving average. So the XLK, which is this S&P Select Spider Fund, wow, if after all that, then they've got, they're going to go before Con uh, what is it, the Senate. I don't know if they're in the media. Questions that are going to be asked by these by big biotechs. Are they going to just shrug it off? I don't know, because this is now a gray leg A. And if it's able to get above 74.50, it's at 72.37, another two points higher by Friday. So the weekly close can get close to the 14 period moving average since it's been under it now. Uh, for three weeks. It's actually been under it for four weeks, but it's closed under it for two, and this week is the third week. So 74.10 is the 14 period moving average. This is going to be important, and I'll tell you why. This spectacular move with just two peaks from the low of 57.57, more than 20 points higher, that's a, what, a 42% or something, to 79.24, peak B with a doji candle, made this the Groucho Marx eyebrows, uh, this is really good because the magnet's only just turned negative, but it isn't a very deep uh, difference between the fast and slow moving averages yet. Friday could change that. So this is going to be important. Not only that, the stochastic is at 46%, not at 20 or 15 like the others in the weekly chart. So this is going to be important. Will it be a leader again? That's my big question. Or does it need more time? My, my look at the different indices that comprise that are really part of the XLK, uh, stocks in the industry uh, tell me that there should be more digestive phase going on. So let's just look at our two minutes and see what's going on here. Whoops, it's going to be retesting in the cup formation. Oh, excellent action. Uh, the e mini is up 41 right now. 41. Very nice. And it's almost about to test. It had a peak E, a two minute peak D in the five. And a uh, 10 minute chart is a PE, but that could recycle because the MACD never crossed negative. So this is, you know, this is good action. There's no question about it. 442, up 46, they're absolutely in sync. The uh, S&P is up 46 and the Dow is up 462. That's, I like that. I like that right now. Um, yeah. So the question is, well, what's the question here? So will you be raising the stop on your long position and what will you do with the short position? So the short position, now we have just a small portion left because my thinking was that we we'll did some retesting. The long position is a two times long. So it's really doing, this is tough, this is tough. I'm gonna to have to make a big decision tonight because I don't wanna be giving up profits at the same time. I don't wanna get out of something where we got in perfectly. Um, that's up 3.6% just today alone, um, 3.6%. 3, 3. I don't know. I'll have to, I, I can't answer that until the, the, anything can happen. Hey, you get one tweet and the Dow could be down uh, 200 points after being up almost 500 points. And, or it could be one tweet and we could be looking at a double on the day on the upside. All I, I can say is that the timing was important, really important. I'll be talking about that in my webinar. Wednesday week, I'm doing a, a, a webinar on called The Tide. How can you recognize the tide? What can help you in looking at the tide? What, what particular technical tools? What notation in the Chapman wave? Just what are the things that go into looking at the tide? And most importantly, if you recognize the tide, remember I spoke about that person in the den who kept shorting all the, all the time and 
once you recognize the time, that's the position you want, because if it's going down, rally should fail, and you'll be saved if you're early because the tide is going down. So you'll be looking good on the short side. So um, the tide is very important. Now we've just broken out to a new intraday high. Very important. Dow's at 456. I'll be right back. Dow's a trap and tiger technician's hour. Whoa, what an interesting day. Whoa, a lot of work. I'll be back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge, heard here at TFNN.com. So we're looking at ASA. This is the, the gold stocks, South African gold stocks. I always look at. We don't actually have any positions in the gold right now. I almost did it because I felt I'd be unfaithful to our dollar long if I went. But actually, they can be completely separate things. I just didn't do anything with gold. But this is a very good move. ASA is up. The 0 0.03 at 10.30, it was trading in the nines. It was actually at nine something, 9.03. So it's up uh, over a dollar from there. That's really a 13, 14% gain. That's very nice. It, to, to be convinced that this is going to be a longer term, uh, kind of a buy and hold almost for gold, I would say, I'm going to just say ASA needs to get to 10.60 within four sessions. That'll be extremely positive. But I'm going to go to the GLD, the gold. Uh, this is the gold miners. This is in a leg uh, C right now. Uh, it has gone above. This one has gone above the high of the 25th of March, at uh, which where it was at 125.31 uh, or 11. And now it's at 124.91, having squeaked today to 125.42. So, so far, this is going into the resistance level that I'd drawn in a long time ago. 
Gold, GLD is acting very nicely, and we'll see. Key support is between 120, 123.80 and 123.50. If there's any serious pullback, but just minor pullbacks, 124 should hold it, and then it should try for the 125.60 to 126.10 level in the next three days. That'll be extremely positive. I just wanted to give both sides, you know, we're looking, Dow's up 470. This is a very big move. So as we wrap up, you're about to go to Steve Rose. Go to the front page of TFNN. You could, could become a subscriber. It'll be free. That's the only way you can get my uh, newsletter, the opening call. Um, had some very good positions. I'm very proud of the work we've done. And uh, this, this is a good time to do it. And then you'll be ready for my webinar on the 12th of June at 5, 5 o'clock, one and a half hours. I'll be showing the different techniques. This will be a lesson, actually. It's going to be a really important moment because the market will have matured this rally, either failing or continuing. It's going to be such an important day. Now, the middle of June is always a, a month. That's where funny things happen. You can get a big spiral to the upside or you can pull back. June is important. Stay tuned for Steve. Stay tuned for, for Dave. I'll be back with Tom later on today. Have a great day. Have a Larry.